Does anyone use crinks? So these pens are pretty awesome. Get that started. Yeah. I just, you know, pull a little bike thingy on the back here. And this is great because um, the pen doesn't move in the, in the video, you know, just the... Uh, because it, it's stationary to the, to the pen, the weld pivots around this point, which is really interesting. Oh, there you go. Can you all see? Okay, I have to bend down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> It's good, it's good exercise. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I said, you know, this, this kind of, the idea of a blank canvas used to be very scary, and it's because of that idea of making mistakes. But I've realized that actually this is, it's a platform, and it's a platform for freedom and a platform for possibilities. And the way that I like to start this drawing, sorry, that <laughs> is, is with the DNA. So, so for me, this is kind of like the DNA of a drawing, and, and I start all the DNA with a kind of, you know, like a bigger, a bigger, like squiggly line. Uh, if I'm listening to music, maybe music would affect me now, you know, and give me a little bit more of a bounce. Go around and round. Try not to get any more ink in the and yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but the pen does, so that's all good. Some dashes just because. So once I have this, I have the DNA of the drawing, and in, in a way the drawing's already completed in my mind. So I look now for the clues. So my work has a, it has a, a list of usual suspects and characters. And, uh, you know, I guess they change just like people in your life and places in your life change. So I look for those clues. And for example, if there's a line that's kind of smooth, like a side of a face, then for me, I'll do a nose there. And if you have a nose, you need a mouth. If you have a mouth, you need a, what do you need? Yeah, you need some eyes. Uh, I, I, going back to stickmen, I've been drawing stickmen since I'm a kid. And I'm a big fan of stick men, and sometimes people say, Chantel, I can't draw, I can only draw a stick man. And I say, great, me too, let's collaborate. And um, I have two types of stick men. These kind of stick men, which are just kind of lazy and they hang out. And then there's the hard workers. So the hard workers, they're pushing, they're pulling, they're holding the drawing together. And look, there's another face in there, let me do that. If there's a, a place where it almost feels like there's land, then, you know, perhaps some trees or some water will appear in there. So I'm just going to do some trees. I have some very simple trees. Lines and, and more lines. And then if you have trees, perhaps you need the sun. And if you have the sun, perhaps you need some birds. And my birds are a kind of classic M-shaped free birds. And I always draw my birds in freeze. I'm from London, where my TH is an F sound. So the number free sounds like the word free. So it's kind of like a joke to myself. Like, there's free birds, ha, 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 and they're free. Um, little upside down face, so orientation doesn't really matter. And for me, words and lines is the same thing. So words and lines will appear in a drawing. So for example, what's your name? Josh. Josh. How do you spell that? J-O-S-H, we'll pull a little Josh in there. Cool, spell it right? Another face here. So like I say, it's, it's already here. The clues are here. And now I just go through and fill them in. It almost feels like this could be like a cavernous space where the stick men are trying to catch up and climb up to something. We don't know what that something is. If there's a, a space that's almost like a triangle, then for me, that's a bird's beak. So if there's a bird's beak, you need a bird's eye. That's my bird's eye. A little bird's wing. Maybe we'll put a lamp there because this feels like it's like a ceiling. So there's the lamp. All the lights on. There we go. Looks like um, this is a place that we would want to climb up to. So let's do a little ladder. We need something to support the ladder underneath. So we'll do some more ground there. Some more.
more dashes because my mind went completely blank. So we'll do some graph dashes until something comes back. Some dashes here. Another little face in here. What's your name? Max. How do you spell that? M-A-X. M-A-X? Oh, Max. Okay, let's do a little Max. What's your name? Andre. Okay, how do you spell that? D R E. I can draw, I can't spell. So, more dashes. And you never know when you finished a drawing until you have that feeling that says stop. And I don't have that feeling yet, so I have to keep going. It feels like it should be a face here. Oh, and I had that feeling that said stop, so I'm going to stop. And then the turn away. And it's always a, pr a su surprise to me that. It works. I feel like this works. Does this work? Yeah, it was all right, right? <laughs> um, because, you know, when you're drawing, you're so close to it. So you don't really know what it looks like until you step back. And people sometimes ask me, you know, how do I plan my composition? And I say, I don't. But I plan, I plan the, the fact that I'm going to have good intention. And I plan the fact that I trust my pen. And I plan the fact that I'm going to enjoy this process. And as a default, it works. Yeah. Great, super. So that's my little little show and tell. <laughs> so maybe you might have some questions yeah. and stuff. So what are you doing with the goat over here now? Well, um, you know, so I guess I'll talk about one project that I've been thinking about and, and started to work on at the Media Lab. And so when I, when I create this drawing, this drawing already has a lot of information now. You know, it has, uh, it has the, the distance of line. It has the speed that I drew it at. It, it has uh, a relationship or it has information about space between objects. It has information about volume and perhaps, you know, with, with solid spaces as well. So a drawing, it has a lot of information. And I'm, I've been thinking a lot about how do we turn this into a tool? How do we turn this into a way of educating and learning, but from a visual perspective? So one thing I started to do is uh, I will time my drawing. So, you know, on your marks, get set, go. I'll time it, and then when I finish a drawing, I will trace the drawing with a piece of string, and then I can work out the distance of, of, uh, of drawing that I have. And that's really interesting because, you know, you have this drawing and then I'll have this, this kind of uh, pile of string in my hand. And this string is equivalent to this drawing. But what if this string also is equivalent to an amount of distance? You know, perhaps that string could be the amount or the equivalent of uh, New York to LA. Uh, and, and then you can start to create maps or you can start to create drawings using this equivalent. Uh, and, and one thing that I want to create there is a, a kind of a series of pens or tools. So for example, what if you have a pen that gives you the amount of street for a city? You know, you calculate the amount of street in Newark, for example. Uh, you kind of uh, equate that to your line. And then when you're drawing, you have that amount of street to draw with. And then the pen kind of shakes and runs out when you've run out of street. Um, and, and then you can press um, a button and uh, you know, a, somewhere a printer will print out a line that you drew with or it will print out that amount of string that you drew with or something like that. So that's something I've been thinking about. And then also, you know, thinking about data, well, if you had a very simple percentage pen, you know, if you're looking at 20% of a city is made up of, you know, Latinos or whatever, well, if you only have 20% of ink to draw with? that represents that amount of data. What if you have a, a you know, it's 80% and you have 8% of ink, and that's something that you draw with. So that's something that I've been thinking about. And just by kind of um, starting to film this process and getting an idea of perhaps the speed um, and the, the kind of, you know, the high or, you know, all these other things that I'm thinking about. So right now I'm just collecting data on my drawing with the, with the idea of, of using this as, as information for education or learning or, making maps or representing data with it. <laughs> you know, on the one hand, it's, uh, it's very different in a way than we are accustomed to approaching you know, the design of a yeah. um, On the other hand, uh, I, I feel there are many valuable lessons for us as designers. Uh, kind of 
to understand that intuition is there present. And you know, even these few exercises that we've, we were working on with analysis of, of kind of significant and substantial information about the yeah. city through lines is to get us closer to read, to have that feel, to have that sense, and to have that intuition. Yeah. To read through the lines. Yeah. Right? To understand something through lines, forms, shapes. And maybe, you know, that kind of the way you describe kind of quantifying that whether you start with intuition, there's still later a process of kind of rationalization, right? Yeah. Of trying to understand that rules are are being set, you know, as you described, whether it's stick figures or faces or letters or you realize that and you know it's something that took you a while, I guess, to yeah. understand. And when you talk about it to you it's it's the most obvious thing and maybe to outsiders it's what what is she Yeah. <laughs> what is she talking about? I mean it, and that's you know that has to do with communicating what we do, but the process of that even in the most kind of intuitive, unexpected, you know, non-compositional, free form, freestyle yeah. work, there is a lot of knowledge. Well, yeah, there's there's a process, and like I say, each drawing has a DNA, and that DNA right. is basically the foundation of of a drawing. And and another thing I've been thinking about, which is maybe something you can all think about as well, or, or just question is that you know when we look at maps you know why is it always from this perspective you know why isn't it from this perspective or why isn't it from this perspective and and that's one thing that I'm trying to trying to show where you know going back to that idea of who are you and mapping your way this this is a map you know but it's done in more of an abstract way but what if this map is actually representing a certain amount of data or information and and you know once you start to to compare that with with other maps like this you start to see the pattern and then you're able to read them. So I, I feel like sometimes we get a little bogged down with this idea of a map should look quite boring and it should be from this perspective and, you know, road yeah. should look like this. And, you know, so one thing I'm thinking about doing is, um, you know, like I say, finding out the amount of street, but, you know, I can uh, start to, to map each street with a line, with, with my line, and, and kind of have a grid or a graph with that and, and start to map things in my own language. Um, yeah. You mentioned you always start with the same sort of DNA, like the sort of squiggly line. Has that sort of evolved through the years, or maybe the, there's a different set of DNAs that change on different surfaces that you start drawing on, or you know, yes, um, you know, for example, if I'm drawing on people, you know, that that kind of it, it's you're drawing on a completely different surface, so that DNA by default is different. Um, uh, an exercise I love to do with my students is I say, you know, what music do you really, really love? And they'll tell me what music they really love, and I say, well, okay, what music do you really dislike? And you know, you get death metal, you get country and western um, and you know when you're drawing that DNA to like death metal you're like da -da 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 -da, and the DNA looks completely different you know it's more spiky it's more kind of um, it has more of a, a relationship and energy of, of what it was inspired by so I feel like that input completely influences the, the, the DNA and, and what that looks like and, and for me when I started to draw in, in these clubs in Japan to, to like noise music and stuff like that. I think what was really attractive to me is that it was so uncomfortable. Drawing to that music was so uncomfortable and different to me, but the, as a result, so was my drawing. My drawing was really different and, and that was very attractive to me because when you're drawing to stuff that makes you feel uncomfortable and when you're drawing to stuff you know, without thinking about it, over time you essentially start to see what you look like you know when you're very comfortable you maybe you're doing the same thing but when you're drawing in all different conditions and when you're drawing when you're comfortable and uncomfortable and when you're drawing when you're thinking and when you're not thinking you essentially over time start to see a pattern and that pattern is you and I think that's something that's really important because I, I think as especially as artists we get told to copy a lot or you know, find your favorite artist and, and draw like them or something like that. And I'm the complete opposite. I'm like, don't look at anyone. You know, do these exercises and, and find out what you look like. 
because that's what is essentially you want to package and someone's going to hire you for and, and all these other things. Does that, is that, a, does that sensitivity carry into the city, for example? I mean, would you say, like with music, you approach a different city and, and with a different kind of comfort? I feel like, you know, just going to a different city, you get a different vibe straight away or, you know, you're, you're greeted in a different way and that completely, you know, influences how you are in a way um, or how you start to react to people. I'm, I'm, you know, I'll talk to anyone and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, when you go to a different city, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm observing, I'm looking around all the time. I, I know these things and, and these things, you know, I if you guys look at my Instagram or something like that, one thing I do is like draw in my dreams. Um, and I draw my dreams in a way that I used to draw in Japan and that's with a very simple like 0 0.05 pen because then I can be more reflective of detail. And I find out when I go to different cities, like when I came to visit Boston, you know, in my dream drawings there's like a swan and there's a boat and there's cheese boy. You know, um, you know, just these like random things that you don't realize, but they're they're seeping in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah because a lot of a lot of your work is actual street street art. Yeah, it is gliding on walls of the city. Yeah, you and know. and it's it's interesting because um, you know when I was younger, I would draw on walls outside. You know, um, in my angrier years, and now I rarely draw outside. I I draw inside. So that's an interesting thing and. But I feel like, you know, drawing inside in a space completely changes the energy of a space. And, and, you know, if you come into our lab now, people walk in and they're like, whoa, you know, they're completely hit by this massive drawing on the wall now. Whereas before, you just get so used to not looking up and looking around. And there's people in our lab that said they never looked up before. But you just, by just creating these lines, you've, yeah. you've you know, affected how people act and, and react in, in a space. And that's kind of interesting.